Although he only plays a small part in A Song of Ice and Fire thus far, the character of Edric Dane is one of the most interesting Easter eggs in the entire story. Not only is the information that he offers up to Arya interesting, but the very existence of Ned Dane seems to indicate something relatively important about the history between the Starks and the Danes. And it seems to indicate that what most people believe transpired between the Danes and Ned Stark must be partially or entirely incorrect. The fact that Arya and Ned Dane even meet is so odd that it seems very overtly intentional. I mean, a northern girl and a Dornish boy coming across each other in the Riverlands is a pretty odd coincidence. And the information that Ned offers up to Arya is fascinating, even if the truth of it is extremely dubious. It's very odd from a narrative perspective, because George R. R. Martin clearly puts Arya and Ned together in very unlikely circumstances and has Ned dump a whole lot of information on Arya that seems to be almost entirely wrong. He tells Arya that he and Jon Snow are milk brothers, that Willa served as a wet nurse for both of them. He also explains that he once saw Ned Stark at attorney and wanted to go speak to him, but couldn't think of what to say. And he tells Arya that his Anashara fell in love with Ned Stark and killed herself due to heartbreak, and is surprised that Ned never even mentioned her to Arya. Edric Dane is obviously still quite young at the time of these revelations, which would probably explain why he doesn't realize that what he's saying actually doesn't make any sense. The fact that he wanted to speak with Ned Stark, and the fact that Edric is even called Ned, is completely nonsensical if Ned Stark is personally responsible for the deaths of Arthur and Ashara Dane. And while a servant of Starfall being John's wet nurse isn't completely unbelievable, it's still very weird. There are, of course, a variety of theories around Ned and Ashara, but I don't personally subscribe to the idea that they were in love. And I actually think that the notion that Ashara is hidden in the neck, living as Howland Reed's wife and Jojen and Mira's mother, has a substantial amount of contextual evidence supporting it. And if that's the case, and Ned essentially kept Ashara's secret for the Reeds and the Danes, it would make some sense as to why the Danes have enough respect for Ned to name their heir after him. However, there is still Arthur. Arthur Dane has the reputation of an honorable and valiant knight, one of the greatest warriors in the Seven Kingdoms. And surprisingly, Ned Stark managed to supposedly defeat him in combat. After Arthur's death, Ned brought the ancestral sword of House Dane back to the family, as a sign of respect. And although the circumstances of this fragment of Westerosi history are mysterious enough, even the few details that are available about this encounter beg far more questions beyond what actually happened. Although it's not entirely impossible that the Danes grew to respect Ned so much because he did something to help Ashara, and he brought Dawn back to them, it's extremely hard to believe. Arthur was truly one of the legends of their family, so killing him is something that would be incredibly difficult to counterbalance. And as far as we know, Ned hasn't done anything to make up for Arthur's death. However, there is one interesting possibility. There are speculations that perhaps Arthur is still alive, thus negating any damage Ned would have done to House Dane. But something that's often overlooked is the significant possibility that the Danes had such respect for Ned because Arthur Dane was doing something objectively wrong to Ned and House Stark. Something that has always stuck out as incredibly bizarre about the entire saga at the Tower of Joy is that there are three Kingsguard guarding Lyanna and presumably Jon. At one point, there was only two. Although Rhaegar wasn't even the king, ergo, it would make sense that the entire Kingsguard wasn't there. The presence of Gerald Hightower, Oswell Went, and of course Arthur Dane, is extremely strange. Particularly, the number of men who were there guarding Lyanna is very strange. The oddness of Lyanna's guard should be obvious based on the results of the combat at the Tower of Joy. The three men were undeniably incredibly skilled fighters, but it only took seven trained men to defeat them. In a time of war, 
where nearly every man in the country had to be ready for battle. Who exactly was it that Arthur Dane and his companions were supposed to be protecting Lyanna from? Truly, it's bizarre, because if anyone ever discovered where Lyanna was, then three men, even three incredibly talented knights, would stand no chance, even against a very small force. And although we can't know if anyone else ever found her before, the very fact that Ned and his small squad of companions defeated them seems to be proof positive that they were a nearly functionally useless guard. And that therefore begs the question, who or what exactly were they guarding? The general presumption is that they were there guarding Lyanna and John from outsiders. But based on the fact that they attacked Ned of all people, it also seems safe to assume that they were not ordered to do whatever was in Lyanna's best interest. There is the barest threat of possibility that they were concerned that Ned would harm John. But given Ned's reputation, it seems obvious and unlikely that they'd believe he'd actually do that. Not to mention, even if they did think that, then Lyanna would quickly disabuse them of that notion. And although interpreting Ned's dreams accurately is impossible, the fact that she seems to be screaming for Ned when the men begin fighting would certainly indicate that she doesn't want Ned to be killed. So, the strongest possibility seems quite obvious here. The men at the Tower of Joy are not capable of fending off even the smallest of forces, and they are willing to kill Ned rather than letting him reunite with his sister. That, combined with what little we know about Lyanna and her personality, makes it seem extremely likely that Arthur was not there as the valiant knight protecting Rhaegar's love, but was in fact there to prevent Lyanna or Jon from leaving. Although Rhaegar is not Aerys, one particular line in A Feast for Crows, Jamie too, really sticks out when it comes to the Kingsguard. When Aerys is assaulting Rhaella, Jamie finally plucks up the courage to say, We are sworn to protect her as well, to John Derry. Derry responds, We are, but not from him. It's obvious that the Kingsguard are accustomed to following orders, even if those orders are objectively and morally wrong. Again, Ned's dreams are quite vague, but Arthur's sad smile before his fight with Ned and his men begins, as well as Gerald's somewhat odd mention that the King's Guard swears a vow, could possibly be explained by the fact that they are doing something that they were ordered to, but that they know is not the right thing to be doing. A significant theme throughout the story is the way in which honor, duty, and justice can be conflicting and complex. Sometimes people do the right thing by breaking their promises, while others do terrible things in the name of keeping them. And given the odd connection that Ned Stark seems to have with House Dane, it's not hard to believe that they don't just have respect for him because of the things that he's done, but that they also feel like there's a certain debt to him that their family owes. Given Rhaegar's obsession with fulfilling his prophecy, it seems clear that he would not have let Lyanna go if she actually wanted to leave. Not to mention, given Lyanna's feelings for her family, it's almost undeniable that she would have done something to intervene and stop all of the violence and bloodshed if she had any choice. Combine that with the fact that at certain points, Arthur Dane seems to be one of two men supposedly guarding Lyanna in an isolated place where she doesn't know anyone and doesn't have any means of escape it's almost impossible to fathom a scenario other than Arthur being there to prevent her from leaving. In that context, Ned being a revered man in the eyes of House Dane makes a great deal more sense. Arthur was Rhaegar's best friend, so it's entirely possible that he was one of the few people who knew about the prophecy and the part that Rhaegar believed he and Lyanna were meant to play in it. Clearly, Rhaegar felt that whatever chaos happened in the Seven Kingdoms was an acceptable price to pay in order to save the world in the future. And it's possible that Arthur believed in it too, or was at least willing to follow Rhaegar's orders to the point where holding on to Lyanna and her child was more important than literally stopping a civil war. But from that point of view, that also means that Arthur was potentially in a position to stop Robert's rebellion and didn't. 
It could mean that Arthur was in a position to stop most of the Stark family from being wiped out in the war, and he didn't do that. He followed his orders both at the expense of the Starks and at the expense of the entire country. And once again, when looking at the dynamic between the Starks and the Danes, within this context, the enormous amount of respect that House Dane has for Ned makes a great deal more sense. If they recognize that Arthur's choices could have gotten thousands of people, along with most of Ned's family, killed, then Ned's show of respect towards Arthur and the Danes would be far more magnanimous than most people would expect from someone who should be their enemy. Add in the potential that Ned may have helped Arthur's sister when Arthur could have been imprisoning his own, and the strange, seemingly contradictory connection between the Starks and the Danes becomes much easier to understand. It's entirely possible that Arthur Dane was simply left at the Tower of Joy to ensure that nothing happened to Lyanna and John. But when weighed against all of the horrors that Robert's rebellion wrought, it seems obvious that this was the wrong choice. It's hard to imagine a world in which Lyanna would be willing to let most of her family die, simply so she could remain hidden. And even if the Danes knew about Rhaegar's bizarre belief that his children were destined to save the world, which seems improbable, it seems likely that they'd recognize that Rhaegar and Arthur had no right to keep Lyanna away from her family in service of their outlandish beliefs. Of course, Ned's perception of Arthur as a valiant knight seemingly contradicts the idea that he was holding Lyanna hostage. However, as is obvious when it comes to Ned's interactions with people like Robert, he has an astounding ability to rationalize away trauma and see people as someone they're not. Plus, given Ned's propensity for choosing honor and duty over logic, it makes sense that he could see someone like Arthur, who is willing to die for his vows, as respectable, even if those vows did grievous harm to his own family. Although this is entirely speculative, and there could be another reason that Edric Dane is seemingly named after Ned, Clearly, there would have to be a very significant reason for the Danes to honor Ned Stark in such an enormous way. And Ned being responsible for two deaths in their family is obviously not the way he would have endeared himself to House Dane. So, perhaps Ned earned their respect simply by respecting them when one of their own damaged Ned's family so badly. But what do you think? Was Arthur Dane in the wrong during Robert's Rebellion? Is Edric Dane being called Ned nothing more than a coincidence? Leave your comments and opinions below. And if you're interested in more content like this, like and subscribe.